Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and today I have this really small 3D printer to show you. This is called the Kid Doodle Mini Box A1. It's a 3D printer that was designed with children in mind, very young children, to sort of start them on their journey of 3D printing in a way that is easy to do and is very approachable to do and something that is visually appealing to them with nice, bright, shiny colors and a big touch screen and the ability to print a wide variety of toys, kind of like some of the ones that you see here, with the press of just a couple of buttons. Now, this particular printer is available right now over on Kickstarter. You can check out the link in the description to take a look at that. It's planning on being shipped out in August which is next month and the price that is going for is $129. All right, so I'm gonna show you some different features that this printer has, the setup process, and then the prints that came off of it. So first let's go over some specs. The build volume on this is 100 by 100 by 90 millimeters, so not that big. In fact, if I open this up and take this build plate off, you see this is how big it is. And in the package they provide two of these. It is magnetic, so it just fits right there on the bed. And there's also guides in the back of the build plate to help you line things up and slot it in properly. And the speed of this printer is actually surprisingly fast. It gets a maximum speed of 600 millimeters per second. That's with its fast mode that's on by default, but you can turn that mode off and then the speed will be around 100 millimeters per second for a normal printing speed. And I gotta tell you, these prints that I got off here, I was actually kind of surprised at how fast some of them printed. So that was a very pleasant surprise. Um, it also has a direct drive extruder and over on the back, it is designed to take these 250 gram spools that Kadoodle is also going to be selling. It fits right on the back of the printer, but if you want, you can just use regular spools as well. You can actually print out an attachment kind of like this directly on this printer that will allow you to attach larger spools to the back of it. Um, I tried to do that with some eSun filament, but unfortunately the diameter of those cardboard spools was a bit too small to fit over this. So it's going to kind of depend on the filament spool that you have, but you can also do what I did and just use a desktop filament holder instead and just put it behind the printer and I was able to run regular size filament that way as well. And it's really easy to just load the filament on here. The filament is run through the sensor on the back up through this tube and directly into the print head from the top. So it's very easy to load. You can get different files to print on this printer in a couple of different ways. They do have a handful of files that are already pre-sliced on the printer and storage, but then you can also connect it to the internet and that will unlock about 63 pages of different fun, kid-friendly models that you can print out. And then you can also slice your own models either through Cura or they have their own slicer called the Kidoodle Slicer. And then you can also print things out that you slice on that slicer as well. There is a USB port on the left side and then you can stick your USB stick in there and then print it directly off of that. So you have a few different options for that. There's also a Kadoodle app that you can download on your phone if you want. And then you can use that app to connect to the printer and then you'll be able to remotely control it from there. And then you can look at the library of models right there on your phone and choose the ones that you want to print and send it over to the printer that way. So nice variety of choices that you have there. So as you can see, this printer is completely enclosed and is that way for safety reasons. So if the printer is printing and then the door opens, it's gonna make this really loud beeping sound and it's going to stop the printing process that's in there. And because this is a 3D printer for kids, that sound is gonna be so loud and so abrasive that any adult nearby will be able to know exactly what happened so they can come and check on their kid. But then you can also turn that off with a passcode if that's something that you wanna do. And then on the 
inside, you see that this is a bed slinging 3D printer. It doesn't have automatic bed leveling, auto Z offset, input shaping, all that stuff. It does not include that. But then at the same time, it also doesn't have the little spinning wheels on the bottom of the print bed that you would have to use to level the bed with a piece of paper and doing all of that because that would just be a bit too much, I think personally, for a kid to have to do before they can get their first print done. So when I first started this up, I just picked a model and I just said, go and print. And the first print, unfortunately did not work out for me because the Z offset was a bit too high. And that's when I saw that in the settings, you can adjust the Z offset. So I just made it a little bit lower and then I was able to print out some of my first models, one of which includes this jet right here. It came with a roll of black filament and I printed out this fighter jet and it came out looking not too shabby. So you can get a closer look at it here. There are some layer lines, you can see that. It's not the nicest print in the world, especially compared to some of your more advanced 3D printers out there, but for something like this, hey, I don't think it came out very bad at all. Very, very nice. And then these wings, they also move like this. So the tolerances were not bad either. But let me tell you something else that happened during the first print. Now it has this way of cleaning the nozzle with this little plastic roller that's on the uh, right side of the printer. And then it has this little poop chute at the bottom as well. And you can actually take out the little drawer that's supposed to collect the filament as it drops down. But unfortunately, as part of that first failure, it was a very unique failure. <laughs> the filament wrapped its way around that that wiper. And then when I went to home the bed, it literally hardened and it pulled it right from this position and the wiper is being held down by a spring. So that spring stretched all the way across the bed, eventually just ripped it off. And no matter what I tried to do to put it back on, I couldn't get it to be the way that it was before. I think the chances of that happening is pretty slim. So I was kind of unlucky in that regard. So unfortunately I'm not able to say how well that wiping mechanism actually works, but hey, I still was able to print out a lot of different things, despite the fact that I no longer have access to that wiper. Let's take a look at some of these other prints. Now, a Benchy is pretty much a good standard now, but as you can see, like this is a different type of Benchy with this long, whatever this is, that extends from the top. It's almost like a tunish kind of a Benchy. And this printed out in a little over 30 minutes. I want to say like maybe around 33 to 37 minutes for this. And that's including this tall part here. So if it had stopped where a normal Benchy would would stop, then it would have taken around 25 minutes to print this. And as far as the quality of a Benchy goes, again, it's not terrible. It's not bad. It is a fair looking Benchy, I would say. Another thing that I printed out on here is this flexi dolphin. So again, a little test of the tolerances to see how loose everything is going to be. So that came out pretty decently. And then I also wanted to see if it was capable of doing some dual color printing. And yes, it is. I had this little cactus plant here that I started printing with this blue filament and then halfway through, which by the way, was very helpful on this touch screen here, this colorful touch screen. It shows you visually where the printing progress is with an image. So when I saw that it was right in the middle of where this pot is, I was able to go into the settings and manually pause it. The tool head went over to the corner. I unloaded the filament. It purged the old filament. I loaded in the new orange filament. It loaded that, it purged it, and then it went right back to printing as normal. And then that's how I was able to get this dual color print. So I like that it does have that level of control over it, you, that you do have that level of control over it, even after the print has already started. 
Here's another one of a man on the moon. And these are all supportless. None of these files were uh, came with support. So these were all on the printer. And then here's a look at this skull here. All these prints have the same thing in common to me. I can see the layer lines. They're not the smoothest prints that I've ever seen in my life. But at the same time, I don't think that they're bad. I think that they are decent 3D prints considering the speed and considering the type of machine that this is. And then this is something that filled up pretty much the entire build plate. They called it like a gyroscopic something or other. I thought that it was a spinning top and I try to spin it and it just kind of does that good enough, I guess. But that's just another print that I was able to print out on here. Um, the amount of failures that I had on this printer was actually surprisingly low. Uh, it does not have a heated bed, but the adhesion that these prints have had to that bed has been actually pretty darn good, surprisingly good. And I haven't used any glue at all. But from what I understand, when this printer does ship out to people, glue is going to be included in that package if you want to use it. But I haven't used any glue and everything has worked out just fine for me. Now let's talk about the noise level of this printer. While it is printing, it is not what I would consider to be a quiet 3D printer. The loudest part of it is going to be the fans, especially when you have it printing in the high speed mode, the fans are gonna be moving faster, so it's going to be louder. If you turn off the high speed mode, then things are gonna get quieter. But then the other um, bit of noise that I can hear is just the mechanics of it all. As the axes are moving, I'm just hearing a lot of sort of like grinding kind of sounds. In fact. I'll let you hear a little bit of what it's going to sound like while it's printing with high speed. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're going to be using this printer somewhere where you're expecting a more quiet environment because it definitely is going to be noticeable while it is up and running. So even though this 3D printer is designed for kids, I do think that having parental guidance or guidance from an older person is going to be best. Perhaps they can take the files that they would like a kid to print if they want, put it on a USB stick, put that inside the printer. And then most kids these days, you know, with access to smartphones and tablets, you know, they already know how all this stuff works. My kids know how it works. It'll be easy enough for them to use the touch screen, tap on what they want to print, and then just watch it happen. My experience with getting successful prints on here, if I can give a percentage, has been about between 85 and 90% successful on all the prints that I tried to make. But this is a 3D printer. It's not going to be perfect. So it's easy enough for a kid to operate, but you still should have someone there just in case something goes wrong. The print lifts off the bed. It's not going to know if the print has failed. It's not going to know if a blob is forming. So you definitely need Need to still keep an eye on those first layers to just kind of make sure that everything is okay but the kid will be able to watch the progress through this clear door to an extent it's not completely clear things look a little bit distorted i do wish that it was just a regular clear plastic or acrylic panel so you can get a clear view of the prints but you can see kind of what's going on it's just not the clearest thing in the world so that's one thing that i would like to see um, different about this but you can still keep a look at the progress and i love the fact that it has lights integrated on the inside and on the outside it just really helps to beef up that presentation so that's it that is the kadoodle 3d printer aimed towards kids on kickstarter right now again there's going to be a link in the description so that you can check it out and uh yeah my time with this i uh, was pleasantly surprised with how this turned out so special thanks to the company for sending this out to me so that i can check it out for you and that's all i got for now so Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this that's 3D printing related and whatnot, be sure to subscribe because I always have more coming. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.